Before the law, both men and women were equally responsible for their crimes. The sexual attribute itself is not contained in the criminal legislation of the Russian Federation. During the history of the USSR, several dozen women were sentenced to death by firing squads, but the sentence, as a rule, was commuted and not carried out. The weaker sex was pitted, because a woman is a mother, she gives birth. Moreover, she gives birth, prolongs offspring, but this woman is still pinned to the wall. The most humane court in the world has ruled that this is the devil of hell himself. In November 1978, the Bryansk Regional Court held a hearing on the case of Antonina Makarova, née Ginsburg. A young secretary was present at the court session. Natalia, I turned my head sharply, and our eyes met Makarova's gaze. There was so much hatred in her, so much anger, that everything turned cold inside me. It lasted a few seconds. She tried to smile at me, and a wry smile appeared on her face. It was impossible to approach the courthouse, even yesterday Antonina Ginsburg was a respected employee, an exemplary mother of two children and her photo hung on the honor board. And today she was charged with charges that were impossible to believe, and at the beginning of the first meeting the question was asked, what made her commit such crimes? She explained very simply, answered literally briefly, I wanted to live. Antonina Ginsburg was accused of killing one and a half thousand people Antonina, of course, was not born an executioner. A 19-year-old girl fought in one of the five Soviet armies defeated by the Nazis as a result of Operation Typhoon. The Nazis were well-armed, had superiority in manpower. The soldiers of the Red Army fought to the last, but the death of a million Soviet soldiers in the so-called Vyazma Cauldron was inevitable. When nurse Antonina Makarova came to her senses after the fight, there was not a soul nearby. Only the corpses of Soviet soldiers who tried to escape from the encirclement before their death. At some point, it seemed to Tanya that she, too, had died and was looking at this terrible picture from heaven. But her heart was beating. Her breathing was ragged. It was a terrifying reality in which one had to survive at all costs. She heard the groan of a young private moaning in the trench. He was wounded but the injury wasn't that serious. Together, Tanya and Nikolai desperately tried to get out on their own through the forest. Kolya tried to hunt, set snares. Tanya was preparing a bull tonka from the bark of acorns. In the afternoon, when it was light, young people warmed themselves by the fire. And at night, when the frosts became unbearable, they tried to keep each other warm. Nikolai became the closest person in the world to Tony. But, alas, she was bitterly disappointed. At some point, the guy realized that it would be easier for him to get out of the cauldron of death alone, and abandoned her in the Bryansk region. As it turned out, his native village was nearby, where his wife and children were waiting for the fighter. During the short-term military field novel, the soldier kept silent about them. Tanya fell to his feet, but to no avail. Nikolai left, leaving her to die in the forest. And in Antonin, indeed, something died. She was abandoned by a young man who deceived her, deprived her of dignity, maiden honor and faith in people. Isn't this too much for a young girl who wandered alone through the Smolensk forests for a month and a half and eventually fell into the hands of the police hunting for the unfinished Red Army soldiers and partisans? Antonina Makarova did not hide that she was a nurse. For this, it could be put against the wall. But she was saved. For what? Why? After talking to the police, and then with the German officers, Tanya behaved extremely cautiously. She criticized the Soviet government, which took away the land, threw millions of people into the furnace of a deliberately losing war. The chief burgomaster considered her his. It was important to support the local population who had defected to the Nazis. Look, there are people, including young people, who are aware of the inferiority of the former system and are ready to build a new future on these lands in the coordinate system of Greater Germany. And to say that all yesterday's Soviet citizens, including communists, Komsomol members and non-party members, took the idea of this construction with hostility, would be a deliberate lie. The Soviet government did not seem like a gift of fate to everyone. The thirties are behind us, the years of repression and Holodomor. The percentage of people who had claims to the Soviet system, as well as relatives who fell into the millstones of the NKVD, was quite large. Society turned out to be not as consolidated as they try to show in Soviet films about the war. And they found themselves on opposite sides of the barricades. 
someone joined the partisans, and someone was glad to have the opportunity to work on their land, conduct private trade, in a word, do everything that the Soviet government, which drove the most enterprising Russian peasants into collective farms and dispossessed them, deprived people overnight. Life in some places, for example, in the village of Lokit in the Bryansk region, where nurse Antonina Makarova is from, was quite tolerable. The Germans, taking into account the pro-fascist sentiments of the population, willingly supplied the peasants with provisions. They took a small occupation tax, severely punished Jews, as well as the Russian population for trying to resist the new government, partisans, people caught in ties with them, their relatives, friends, went to the expense. But the Russian peasants remembered perfectly well that the Soviet government punished those who did not try to resist it. Well, and Tanya. A 19-year-old girl, yesterday's child. She found herself surrounded, faced with unimaginable difficulties. They say this is happening against the background of her boyfriend's betrayal, as well as the need to somehow survive. Had she been reborn into a monster? Rather, she remained a real person who, in an extreme situation, being hurt, insulted by the offender, is ready for much or even everything. No one asked her the question either you or them? Tanya especially came to the pro-fascist village of Elbow. Can you shoot a communist? To Kinga drag on a cigarette, the chief burgomaster of the village of Loka Kaminsky asked Antonina. At least ten, she blurted out without batting an eye. Tanya Makarova took the oath of allegiance to Germany. And she began to carry out death sentences. She was allocated housing and given a good salary. Life went on as usual. In abundance and warmth, the girl was nice and calm. She felt protected. Isn't that what every woman aspires to? Well, in the fact that not everyone has to pull the trigger of a machine gun. So after all, the NKVD officers who shot enemies of the people day and night in the basements in 1937, as well as earlier and later, were no worse and no better than Tonka. People are like people. This government has only enemies. This one has others. To the place of execution, the executioner girl, who was carrying a large caliber machine gun on a cart, was accompanied by several henchmen policemen. The convicts were prisoners, partisans, underground workers, and members of their families. In order for the first execution to go like clockwork, she was poured a glass of vodka. She drank it down in one gulp. And she started shooting. A life of prosperity, that's what Antonina lacked so much. She was surrounded by attention, having fun at a local club, where German soldiers had a cultural rest in the company of local prostitutes, and she, the executioner girl, relieved tension and forgot with what hope the eyes of the doomed looked at her. The girl's unrestrained romances with German officers helped to forget, as it was unusual for them to engage in sexual contact with the executioner girl. Was Antonina a machine gunner in her right mind, who took off the clothes she liked from the shot women? Well, of course, yes. She just wasn't bothered by any traces of blood or bullet holes. She could patiently patch them up in the evenings after a hard-working day. Tanya was active even before the appearance of fashionable outfits. The first floor of the stud farm where she lived was equipped as a prison. And she often went downstairs to look at those who would become her clients tomorrow morning. Find out the price of things, choose what she likes best. What to wear yourself and what to sell. In the summer of 1943, there were bloody battles for the liberation of the Bryansk region. On October 5, 1943, Soviet troops occupied the elbow and carried out a sweep of Nazi collaborators, but the executioner girl was not among the traitors caught. The fugitive was sentenced in absentia to the tower. Searched all over the country. But traces of her were lost. Tanya found an easy way out. Stole someone's military ID. Now it turns out that she spent almost the entire war in a sanitary battalion. At the end of the war, she got a job in a mobile Soviet military hospital, took care of the wounded, one of whom fell in love with her to unconsciousness and took her to the Belarusian level. After her marriage, Tanya took her spouse's surname, got a job at a sewing factory as a production controller, became a real leader, whose photo hung on the honor board, a conscientious and responsible person, gave birth to two daughters. Two participants of the Great Patriotic War managed to achieve the allocation of a free apartment. They were given housing for their heroism and selfless work. By May 9, both were awarded prizes. Neither her husband nor the children knew anything about Tonka's past. And she had no friends. The accident helped to expose the executioner. 
In 1976, a resident of Moscow by the name of Panfilov was going on a trip abroad. In OVIR, where a man entered all his relatives in the questionnaire, a strange detail was noticed. All the relatives of the applicant to travel abroad were Panfilovs. And only one sister, Makarova. There was a small incident with Tanya in elementary school. When she came to class in a new class, she was so confused and scared that she could not tell her last name. The guys who knew her father Makar shouted, She is Makarova. So they wrote it down. How is this inaccuracy in a class magazine legalized in other documents? That didn't happen in those days. But the confusion in the papers allowed Antonina Panfilova Makarova Ginsburg to hide from the persecution of the KGB for a very long time. The investigators, who knew that the executioner girl had brothers and sisters, checked all the Makarovs without touching the Panfilovs. But after 34 years and 8 months, as a result of a routine check of the OVIR before issuing a passport to citizen Panfilov, they managed to get on the trail of the legendary machine gunner who destroyed the entire village of Lokit during the war. Antonina was followed for a year, secretly delivering to Lepolsky a group of people who survived a meeting with a machine gunner who almost fainted from horror, identifying the living executioner. After a series of thorough checks, she was detained. Antonina Ginsburg had no hint of resistance or fright. She thought she would be given three years at most. The war will write everything off. I couldn't do otherwise, Antonina told a cellmate who was especially attached to her. And she didn't lie during the interrogations, telling the truth. Her confidence that she was not facing serious punishment was so great that Tonka became interested in the working conditions of her prison guards. She believed that the Soviet penitentiary system might be interested in her services. After hearing the death sentence, Antonina desperately fought for her life, appealing to all authorities, including the Central Committee of the CPSU. She asked for pity on her. I hope that they would take into account the selfless work in the peaceful field after the war. And they will mitigate the punishment, taking into account the fact that I am a woman. In the end, 1979 was proclaimed the Year of Women in the Soviet Union. It didn't help. All petitions for the pardon of the machine gunner Tonka were rejected. At the court hearing, the women fainted when they heard a description of her actions that she had committed. Doctors were on duty in the lobby, it smelled of valerian. Makarova often shot entire families, as a rule, they were close partisans, she could easily kill a baby, while she was absolutely mentally healthy. After the shooting, she took off the clothes from the corpses and thoroughly washed them of blood. She wore these clothes with great pleasure, and the Germans were terribly pleased with Antonina. This executioner cost very little money, he killed his compatriots in cold blood and was ready to work day and night. Her husband and two children could not believe what the investigators were saying about the mother. Victor Semenovic Ginsburg was present at all court sessions and told everyone that it was a mistake. A woman with whom he has lived for more than 30 years cannot be a Nazi criminal and shoot people with a machine gun. He wrote to the prosecutor that he did not believe that his wife could be a murderer she showed the places where she executed people, described the details and claimed responsibility for 118 murders. It was proved that Antonina Makarova killed 168 people. She was taken away by a convoy, and people left the courtroom. Victor Ginsburg stayed in the hall and sobbed. The machine gunner was shot on August 11, 79, but until the end of her days she hoped that everything would work out and she would figure out how to stay alive.